What's up guys, Zach from Wire Customs, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a custom steering column out of F1 steering box for your Model A. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut this flange off right here, because I wanna stick a portion of this through the frame and put the flange closer here so I can have everything lined up inside the Model A, so much similar to where the uh, steering column was before. So what I'm gonna do is weld a flange closer to the inside, and I'm gonna, a, a loose flange that's not welded to anything that I'm gonna bolt it to on the outside to kind of give me that pancake and give me the strength to get in the frame. Because this diameter on the sector shaft here is much larger than the sector shaft on the Model A. So I'm gonna need to open up the Model A uh, frame quite a bit to get this to fit. I'm gonna take this tensioning nut off and all four screws so I can open this up and get the sector gear out. All right, now go ahead and clean this up and pry this case open. Go ahead and pull the shaft out. Now, as you see, this all comes out in assembly. This actually slides in and out from the inside. All right, so this shaft is gonna come out from the bottom. So once I take these four out, this should also come out as assembly and the gearbox will go straight up and off the car. All right, so now that you got it completely apart, I would suggest cleaning out really good. Um, get as much of the old grease out of it as you can and uh, take a good look at your bearings. Make sure they're not scarred, scratched. Make sure they're worth using. Make sure all this time is worth it. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna put this in a vise and I'm gonna cut this flange off. After I cut the flange off, I wanna grind it nice and smooth with this shaft because this whole shaft right here is actually gonna go through the frame on the Model A when we're done. All right, now that I got it ground over nice and smooth as I possibly can, uh, really rounded uh, with the big grinder, I'm gonna move into my 36 grit on my angle grinder here. And I'm gonna stay flat with it, try to make it as flat and as flush as possible with the other part of the shaft. Uh, once that's cleaned up, I'll DA it, and we'll be just about done with a little modification here. All right, so I started with 36 on my grinder and stepped up, stepped up, stepped up, uh, trying to make sure it's just nice and flat. Now I'm gonna do 120 with my DA to make it look really nice all the way around. But I'm not gonna completely go crazy because I'm still leaving the rest of the box cast. Um, this is gonna be a vintage drag racer, so it's not gonna be like a glorified uh, pretty car. So 120 for me is gonna do it. But if you really, really wanted to, you could probably smooth out this whole box so when you paint it, it looks a lot nicer. Okay, so if we look here, obviously this hole is way too small for our new box. So we need to make a stencil or template of the circle of this box here. So we can put it up here and give it a good draw and uh, get a nice clean cut. So this will go right through the front. So for my flanges, I'm gonna have them CNC cut so they look really nice on the outside. Um, I just drew out my plans right here. You can steal these if you'd like, but they fit on the Model A frame really well. Um, the drawings aren't perfect, but the measurements are, so uh, that sets it up pretty nice to weld on the inside of the box and to have the exact same flange on the outside so when they're mushed together, they're actually giving the frame some support from that hole that we're going to cut in the frame. So 
since I'm going to cover up the original holes with a bracket, and uh, I'm not going to use the original holes, I made the bracket make a little bit more sense to how our gearbox is going to be. Uh, I just went ahead and plugged those holes, ground them, ground them down, cleaned them up pretty good. Um, didn't grind them down perfect because they're just going to get completely covered up uh, with our new bracket anyways. Alright, so I just got the flanges in from the CNC shop. Uh, they worked out really well. I like how they look, but most importantly, they both fit over our steering housing here. And it's spinnable, adjustable, so I can move the steering uh, box at whatever angle I need it to be for inside the cab. Weld it on this side. We're going to cut our hole in the frame, stick this in, figure out what direction it needs to be so it's nice and comfortable for me while I'm sitting in my seat. All right, so I DA'd my uh, flanges really well to get rid of what little slag was left and to clean them up. It just makes it easier and cleaner to weld on later. And now I'm going to center it in the frame. Um, I'm going to get it exactly where I want it. Here's where it changes, depends on your build. Some guys come in closer to the cowl, some guys go further out. Uh, so just decipher and figure out what you need for your build. But for mine, it's going to go in the original spot. And uh, I made these to snug. I made these that they're snug fit inside the frame. So if you're using my dimensions, just keep that in mind. So you don't want to start from the outside then match it on the inside because it might not fit that direction. Start from the inside, get it where you want it. Then what I'm going to do is drill my holes. Then the holes are what's going to line up the flange on the outside so they'll be too easy. Once I have the flange lined up on the outside, then I'll drill the big hole in the center Then everything will be good to go at that point. Okay, so what I did here was I lined the bracket up on the inside to make sure it's going to fit in the frame since it's a big bracket and I maxed out the frame width on the inside. I clamped it down and then I stepped up and cut my hole for the first bolt right here. So now that I have a bolt hole in it, I bolted it in nice and tight and I matched the top of this flange with the angle of my frame so it looks nice and parallel with the frame just so it looks good. I matched it so I got the frame uh, degree and it came down here and got the bracket degree and make sure they're exactly the same. So now I'm gonna clamp it on real hard, bolt it down, drill the rest of my holes, draw out the circle, cut it out, then we can start working on the angle of the uh, steering box. So there it is, bolted up in all its glory. Um, all I gotta do now is scribe it, cut it out, then we can finally put the steering box in. So what I get is my heavy jigsaw here with a metal blade and I cut a bunch of triangles out trying to get close to that circle that we just outlined. Then once I get close to it and get all the triangles cut off, I'm going to use my carbide and actually round everything off, make it look nice and pretty. Um, good thing is that once we put our brackets on, you'll barely be able to see this cut at all. So try to make it nice and clean, but it's not super crazy. All right, so here's what I was able to do with my jigsaw. Um, this is what I meant by cutting a bunch of triangles in it. Uh, it's what I got. I know there's a lot of easier ways and faster ways. If I had a plasma torch, I would have plasmed it out. But uh, I just got a jigsaw. So I cut it out. None of these notches are above my scribe mark. So once I carbide up to my scribe mark, it'll be a nice pretty circle all the way around. So here's what that craziness ended up looking like after uh, carbiding up to my scribe level. We'll put the bracket on and we'll put the steering box on and see how everything fits. So we'll put both flanges on just so I can make sure everything lines up and fits all the way across. Screw my stuff over later. There we go, now we can set the column angle, and you set how far in and out we want the column to be. Since the um, sector gear actually sticks out pretty far, 
we could almost go all the way flush. So that's how much space that we have to move this box around, which is pretty, pretty nice to have. All right, so how you do this next portion is completely up to however you're doing your build. Um, what I did so far was I put the 59 column back on and all I did was put the drop column from the 39 on. I took it off the 39 column and slipped it onto this one. I clamped it up in place where I wanted on my dash and I got it where I felt like the steering wheel was as flat as possible. It's not crooked or canted from one side or another. Um, I'm able to shut my door. That's something you need to think about in a Model A with big steering wheel. Uh, able to shut the door or not. Then I have the column, if I'm looking from the engine compartment, nice and parallel with the engine. It doesn't look crooked or cannon either way. Then I support it with the jack on the underside. So the box isn't sitting crooked and the pitman arm is gonna be nice 90 degree down. Um, this is all the stuff you need to make sure it's set up just right. Make sure it looks right, stand back from it. Get a good eyeball on it. Now that everything looks parallel and square, I'm gonna put a couple good tack welds on the inner flange. So one thing you can't do on something as important as a steering shaft is to just butt weld it. Um, the steering shaft right here, as you can see, it focuses. I beveled the edges really well. Then when I ground this top piece down, I put a level on the side of it, put it on the flat, uh, my table, to make sure it wasn't cut side to side crookedly. Make sure I got a zero degrees on my leveler. But uh, most importantly, make sure you get a really good bevel all around the edge of both this and the part you're welding it to. So when you're burning it all the way around real hot, um, you're not just getting the, the very tip, I'm getting more surface on my weld by putting a little bevel around the edges. So on your steering shaft, make sure you weld it somewhere where there's not gonna be a bearing sitting. Um, I have a bearing up here and I have a secondary bearing here the one further down. Um, this is gonna go in and out without any interference to any of my bearings. Uh, I would suggest for you to burn it as hot as you can. Don't grind it down or try to make it really flat is the main goal. Then sleeve it with the secondary tube on the outside. You can't be too safe on steering. All right, so here's my steering box after my modifications are all done. It's officially bolted in into the car. I got my steering wheel on. And uh, the only difference right now is just that it's gutted. I don't have uh, the internals in it right now, but I think it looks pretty good. The inside plate's welded, the new column's on, the 39 shaft's welded on. So my steering actually fits for a 39 steering wheel. It looks pretty nice. Uh, the drop column is not actually bolted on yet. I have to drill holes into my dash. But I love how the drop column is going to look in the car. Can't wait for it to be all painted up and looking good. Now it's time to wrap my pedals around the steering column. So that does it for the steering column. Everything else is just putting it together and painting it. Um, the hard part's out of the way. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, shoot me some comments or any questions that you may have. Thanks for watching.